Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Many have written the formula for their lifting and yet it looks like heavens are closed. Many have written the formula for their prosperity. Many have written the formula that will wipe the tears of their family. The Bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So don't get used to religion. Oh, it's time for the word. Oh yeah, let's judge. Acts chapter this, we write. If it's a nice word, you say, mm preach preacher and all those kinds of things we share the grace and people go back and nothing changes let me tell you religion is a demon it's not just a wrong philosophy i believe there is a spirit of religion that makes people hang around god but never benefit from him are we together now yes you can get so used to do i invited sister a i invited brother b and you sit down and don't get bless yourself or i am a worker you can be standing behind the mic singing when i raise a song and the revelation that can transform your destiny comes and you sing it out of your life while you are not listening and focusing so we have to be sensitive my brothers and my sisters god is not a magician there is an exact way men are raised in this kingdom. Can you cry in one minute again and say, I cause distraction from my life. Lord, whatever it is that makes that I do not understand. You can imagine how brilliant people are, but the moment the word comes, they become unfruitful to it. That means it's an attack. I don't believe anybody here is dull. Some of us, academically speaking, we are very sound people. But the moment it comes to the issue of the word, there is an attack. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This kingdom life that we are living is a supernatural life. And it's a life that will continue to call for contention. That is the reason why you can finish an encyclopedia but not be able to read 100 pages from your Bible. What is so difficult about this thing that you cannot read is because there is a spirit behind it. I can give you a novel that is twice this page and some of you will finish it in one week and you don't have time. It's not that you sit down and you will keep reading. And within one week you are done but you pick this to read and see what happens you will it will be a miracle if you cross 10 pages of this doesn't matter what part that means there is a spirit that opens this for you it's amazing how you can sit down and open your Bible and open side by side with even a Christian book and you would rather read the Christian book nothing is wrong with it you are reading it but just to sit and read this one raw every demon from hell will fight you because this word you see let me tell you whether you understand what he's saying or not the moment your eyes make contact with this word something starts happening to your spirit and that's the reason why when the word of god is about being taught somebody who already slept in the afternoon the spirit of slumber just comes on the person you see that as soon as the service is over he can stand behind a car and discuss politics for two hours so it was never about tiredness it was about an attack on the word you heard the testimony of the dear lady here she came and sat down as soon as praise and worship was over the fire from the praise and worship made those spirits you see evil spirits are real please let's 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 not fool ourselves let us know this world we live in we are not alone are we together that you sit down from the start to the finish of a service is a miracle it's a sign that god is doing something in your life you see people you see what happens during miracle service the moment prayers are about to offer, you want to ease yourself. You want to do something. Ah, I feel uncomfortable. It's a lie. 
it's an agitation these spirits are seeing beyond dimensions that your eyes can see so they know what is happening in the realm of the spirit as the power of god is about to be released and they will cause every discomfort some of you who drag people here to come and repent notice how well behaved they are as soon as the praise and worship starts they just say I, I, i'm tired i want to go it's a lie they are not tired the spirit that needs to be casted out you see that let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if someone invites you here and you ever get to this ground or connect it's a sign that your miracle has started because the kind of attack you try it one day and you will see that somebody who would ordinarily give you money will say sorry i don't have any money for anything just to leave kaduna and come it's an attack are we together now but you have a responsibility to refuse the will of man is respected even by demons yes sir if god respects your will then every other force on earth must respect your will if they usurp your will they manipulated you in a way that allowed them to find expression i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can't force you i can only advise you choose life you don't choose life just by verbalizing it you choose life by paying the price to sit down and do the things that minister life are we together mm -hmm. help us tonight holy spirit in the name of jesus some of you here need to go on a project just gather strategic koinonia messages that relate to certain areas in your life the media will be more than glad to help you are we together you put these teachings together and you go on a word fast let me tell you what that means you will eat there are many kinds of fasting most people only know the one that you suspend eating for 12 hours or some days but there is a way you can go on a movie fast that means you off every movie. You can go on a phone fast. Off your phone. It's, it's a way of fasting. Are we together? And then you can have time for the word. That the only thing your ear hears for a whole day is a message. Not somebody calling you. Ah, how are you? Mm -mm. The only thing that you hear, aside from bikes driving themselves out, is the word of God. You sit down and say, Lord, my life must change. What is the key? You hear one message, you hear part of the key. It can be a message you've always had, but now because you are giving God your attention, fire comes from heaven. And that's it. You catch something. You will come out of that place knowing that I've gotten this. When you say it, they will laugh at you until the results bail you out. Please give your destiny time. You heard what the dear lady said? wonderful lady by the way i'm busy nobody is busy it's a lie we are looking for something nobody is busy if you're on your way going to kaduna this night and i say hold on somebody wants to give you one million are you busy talk to me no so the idea of being busy means i have not yet come to an understanding that the word of god is profitable so please let me leave it aside while I look for the things that look profitable. Nobody leaves what gives you profit. So if you do not have time for the word, it's a revelation. It's a sign that in your dealings with God, you have not been quickened to a point where you have seen the value and the profitability of the word of God. So you can throw away the word of God and watch film. I'm, I'm not, please don't get me wrong. I'm not against movies. But I'm telling you there is a devil out there that is demeaning the power of the word of God and we choke all kinds of things in our heads and we teach spirits come create fortifications and then this is what we say because we believe that just hanging around the word of God will produce result we will get angry and say I've done everything I know to do you see that I've done everything I prayed every prayer I attended this I even fasted God is unfair it's not true everybody that gives god time must get something from him 
if you give me time your life will never be the same give satan time your life will never be the same one of the reasons why we never see his outstretched arm is because we don't give god time i'm busy i'm too busy i'm, I'm busy it's demonic my soul wait thou upon the lord because my brothers and my sisters all that we are looking for one visitation from god can give you something that in a lifetime you may never get preacher say it but it is true i will search for you and i will find you and i will if satan steals the word from you you will pass him and he will pass you he has no business with you again it is the one thing that he will seek and fight for welcome to a place absolutely conducive for the holy spirit experience intimacy partnership and fellowship this is koinonia It must be unto me according to your word. It must be unto my destiny according to your word. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Can you pray that prayer? Lord, it must be unto my destiny according to your word. It must be unto my life according to your word. It must be unto my spirit according to your word. Your word is reliable. Hallelujah. I'd like you to prophesy to your destiny tonight and command it to hear the word of the Lord. Command that your destiny must make progress. Please speak. You are a speaking spirit. Open your mouth and speak. In the name of Jesus, I speak. I speak over my destiny. You hear the word of the Lord. The Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. He upholds all things by the word of his power. Nothing short of beauty and glory. I declare, I prophesy. Hallelujah. I want you to pray one last prayer and then we'll sit. The word must work in my life. Listen, listen, hold on. The Bible said the seed is the word of God. It was sown in three different kinds of soils. It was sown, but not all of them had a harvest. Why? Because between the seed time and harvest, an enemy came. He didn't do anything to the soil. He only did something to the seed. I'd like you to declare, the problem is never the seed. I command the soil of my spirit. You must receive seed and it must yield a harvest. Lift your voice and pray. A harvest whose profiting will appear unto all.
Are you praying? Please don't be distracted. Pray, pray. Don't look around. Pray. I speak to the soil of my spirit. You receive the word of God and you yield a hundredfold. I declare you receive the word of God and you yield a hundredfold. the word of God. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh. The sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is me. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is me. I cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Yahweh is me. I sing holy. seated holy spirit we have come before you tonight we cry for understanding there is nothing we can know except you open up our understanding lord i pray for those here and the thousands of people around the nations of the earth following i pray that your word will prevail in a mighty way tonight for your suit he's not looking for your tie all that is nonsense what will he do with your suit and your tie He's not even looking for your destiny. He knows that anything minus the word is equal to nothing. For nothing was made that was not made by him. Are we together now? The Bible says in the beginning, listen carefully. He didn't say in the beginning was a formula. In the beginning was the word. And that word was with God. And that word was God. He said he was with God in the beginning. Then he says, through him, all things were made. And he says, nothing, including a destiny, nothing was made that was not by him. So Satan knows that the making factor in men's lives is the word. So when he comes to this gentleman, he doesn't have any business with your tie or whatever. He looks for where the word is. And the Bible says, Satan cometh immediately. If Satan steals the word from you, you will pass him and he will pass you. He has no business with you again. It is the one thing that he will seek and fight for. Show me a man, my brothers and my sisters, listen very carefully. No matter what Satan has done in your life, if the word of God can come upon you, if the word of God can be understood and received and diligently applied with faith, you will make nonsense out of the devil. It's only a matter of time. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Because you see, we have to be careful. Church people right now don't grow again. 
because we are used to the religious activity of the world we come and sit down and our bios we are writing notes that can change our lives but there is a demon of religion sitting on people many people have written their miracles in their jota and yet they remain in bondage many have written the formula for their lifting and yet it looks like heavens are closed many have written the formula for their prosperity many have written the formula that will wipe the tears of their family the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so don't get used to religion oh it's time for the word oh yeah let's judge acts chapter this we write if it's a nice word you say mm preach preacher and all those kinds of things we share the grace and people go back and nothing changes let me tell you religion is a demon it's not just a wrong philosophy i believe there is a spirit of religion that makes people hang around god but never benefit from him are we together now yes you can get so used to do i invited sister a i invited brother b and you sit down and don't get bless yourself or i am a worker you can be standing behind the mic singing when i raise a song and the revelation that can transform your destiny comes and you sing it out of your life while you are not listening and focusing so we have to be sensitive my brothers and my sisters god is not a magician there is an exact way men are raised in this kingdom. Can you cry in one minute again and say, I cause distraction from my life. Lord, whatever it is that makes that I do not understand. You can imagine how brilliant people are, but the moment the word comes, they become unfruitful to it. That means it's an attack. I don't believe anybody here is dull. Some of us, academically speaking, we are very sound people. But the moment it comes to the issue of the word, there is an attack. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This kingdom life that we are living is a supernatural life. And it's a life that will continue to call for contention. That is the reason why you can finish an encyclopedia but not be able to read 100 pages from your Bible. What is so difficult about this thing that you cannot read is because there is a spirit behind it. I can give you a novel that is twice this page and some of you will finish it in one week and you don't have time. It's not that you sit down and you will keep reading. And within one week you are done but you pick this to read and see what happens you will it will be a miracle if you cross 10 pages of this doesn't matter what part that means there is a spirit that opens this for you it's amazing how you can sit down and open your Bible and open side by side with even a Christian book and you would rather read the Christian book nothing is wrong with it you are reading it but just to sit and read this one raw every demon from hell will fight you because this word you see let me tell you whether you understand what he's saying or not the moment your eyes make contact with this word something starts happening to your spirit and that's the reason why when the word of god is about being taught somebody who already slept in the afternoon the spirit of slumber just comes on the person you see that as soon as the service is over he can stand behind a car and discuss politics for two hours so it was never about tiredness it was about an attack on the word you heard the testimony of the dear lady here she came and sat down as soon as praise and worship was over the fire from the praise and worship made those spirits you see evil spirits are real please let's 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 not fool ourselves let us know this world we live in we are not alone are we together that you sit down from the start to the finish of a service is a miracle it's a sign that god is doing something in your life you see people you see what happens during miracle service the moment prayers are about to offer you want to ease yourself you want to do something ah, i feel uncomfortable it's a lie it's an agitation these spirits are seeing beyond dimensions that your eyes can see 
so they know what is happening in the realm of the spirit as the power of God is about to be released and they will cause every discomfort some of you who drag people here to come and repent notice how well behaved they are as soon as the praise and worship starts they just say I, I, I'm tired I want to go it's a lie they are not tired the spirit that needs to be casted out you see that let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if someone invites you here and you ever get to this ground or connect it's a sign that your miracle has started because the kind of attack you try it one day and you will see that somebody who would ordinarily give you money will say sorry I don't have any money for anything just to leave Kaduna and come it's an attack are we together now but you have a responsibility to refuse the will of man is respected even by demons yes sir if God respects your will then every other force on earth must respect your will if they usurp your will they manipulated you in a way that allowed them to find expression I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing I can't force you I can only advise you choose life you don't choose life just by verbalizing it you choose life by paying the price to sit down and do the things that minister life are we together mm -hmm. help us tonight Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus some of you here need to go on a project just gather strategic koinonia messages that relate to certain areas in your life the media will be more than glad to help you are we together you put these teachings together and you go on a word fast let me tell you what that means you will eat there are many kinds of fasting most people only know the one that you suspend eating for 12 hours or some days but there is a way you can go on a movie fast that means you off every movie. You can go on a phone fast. Off your phone. It's, it's a way of fasting. Are we together? And then you can have time for the word. That the only thing your ear hears for a whole day is a message. Not somebody calling you. Ah, how are you? Mm -mm. The only thing that you hear, aside from bikes driving themselves out, is the word of God. You sit down and say, Lord, my life must change. What is the key? You hear one message, you hear part of the key. It can be a message you've always had, but now because you are giving God your attention, fire comes from heaven. And that's it. You catch something. You will come out of that place knowing that I've gotten this. When you say it, they will laugh at you until the results bail you out. Please give your destiny time. You heard what the dear lady said? wonderful lady by the way i'm busy nobody is busy it's a lie we are looking for something nobody is busy if you're on your way going to kaduna this night and i say hold on somebody wants to give you one million are you busy talk to me no so the idea of being busy means i have not yet come to an understanding that the word of god is profitable so please let me leave it aside while I look for the things that look profitable. Nobody leaves what gives you profit. So if you do not have time for the word, it's a revelation. It's a sign that in your dealings with God, you have not been quickened to a point where you have seen the value and the profitability of the word of God. So you can throw away the word of God and watch film. I'm, I'm not, please don't get me wrong. I'm not against movies. But I'm telling you there is a devil out there that is demeaning the power of the word of God and we choke all kinds of things in our heads and we teach spirits come create fortifications and then this is what we say because we believe that just hanging around the word of God will produce result we will get angry and say I've done everything I know to do you see that I've done everything I prayed every prayer I attended this I even fasted God is unfair it's not true everybody that gives God time must get something from him if you give me time your life will never be the same give Satan time your life will never be the same one of the reasons why we never see his outstretched arm is because we don't give God time 
I'm busy. I'm too busy. I'm, I'm busy. It's demonic. My soul wait thou upon the Lord. Because my brothers and my sisters, all that we are looking for, one visitation from God can give you something that in a lifetime you may never get. Preacher, say it, but it is true. I will search for you and I will find you. And I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you in worship. And I will worship with all my heart. We will search for you and we will find you. We will find you. With all our heart, we will lift our hands to you in worship, and we will worship with all our heart. One more time, let me just sing the song that I will search for you, and I will find you, I will find you. With all my love, and I will lift my voice to you in worship. I will worship with all my heart. I want you to sit quietly tonight and listen to what I want to teach you. Sit with your soul your spirit, your ears, and listen. God knows, ask him, that I love you with all my heart. My philosophy of leadership is that you are a failed leader until the people you lead become exceptionally successful by every standard. Are we together now? So it doesn't matter whether it's a revelation yet to me, I must insist until it speaks in your life. Because you see, the Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. By her children. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you worshipping for the first time, God bless you. We we'll honor you at the end of the service. For now, let's get to the word of God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis 2, verse 15. Genesis 2, verse 15. What is this that I see? I command that spirit to leave now. I command, the Lord just showed me something. I command that spirit. You just allow me to do my madness. I command that spirit. You must let this family go now. I command that spirit. You must let this family go now. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. It says, and where the spirit of the Lord is. The same, I'm seeing two people to overflow one. I command that spirit to go now. You are leading right now. This chain that has held this family is time for them to testify. I command that spirit to lead in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that spirit to lead. There is still one more person. The Lord is not allowing me to continue. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to lead. You have to go. This is Mount Zion. Shakaporo sikatalahasiada. You know, one of the things that happens, let me teach you something. Do you know when God opens your eyes in the spirit, you will be able to know when, let me tell you what happens. When God opens my eyes now in the spirit, 
I will not only see an individual sitting, I will also see the spirits connected to them. You see? Yes. And usually, because the eye is the light of the body, once there is that contact, there is an agitation in the realm of the spirit. And that's why sometimes someone can just be looking quietly and start shouting. The individual doesn't know what just transacted in the realm of the spirit. Remember the demons looked at Jesus and they saw the body of a 33 year old young man. But when they looked, they said, ah, no, are you not? And Jesus said, keep quiet. So you can see beyond just an individual sitting. That's what just happened now. You'll be surprised now. These people will come and testify and tell you for 10 years nobody has risen in our family and that's it Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 please follow me carefully let's see how God will grant us grace to make progress and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it 16 and the Lord God commanded the man saying, listen, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge, not a knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shall thou not eat. For in the day that you eatest thereof, you will die. Now, listen carefully. Jesus is giving a disclaimer here. He's giving man access to the garden. Are we together now? And he's giving man a disclaimer that in this garden, there are many trees. I give you access to partake. The word eat there doesn't just mean eat alone. It means to partake of the benefits that come with that privilege. He says that... There is a kind of tree that he forbids. It's amazing that even the tree that is forbidden has good. Now listen carefully. The tree has what? Yet is part of the forbidden tree. So he says this tree doesn't have evil alone. There are many good things that can come from this tree. Yet there is a reason why I forbid you from partaking and this is the reason that the day you eat that tree regardless of the good it carries that day you will die look up the day man ate of this did he die in as much as we know death Adam did not die Eve did not die that means he was talking about something else in the day not in the month remember until this time he had created time and seasons so he says in the day the moment you partake this death starts for you listen carefully and then in spite of the fact that it comes with good notice the marketing system of the tree it projects good first then evil not evil and good the character of this tree is such that when you come you will never know there is evil on it. The system is good and evil. Even God acknowledges that the tree had good. Are we together now? Genesis chapter 3. We'll read from verse 1. Let's see to verse 7 very quickly and then we'll have a very serious discussion tonight and pray. The Lord is giving us wisdom. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, listen, Satan is talking now. Yea, had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Because the woman was not there when God was telling the man, This tree has good and evil. Adam just told her that this is a tree in the midst of the garden. And so she's replying Satan now. God had said, Ye shall not eat. 
neither shall ye touch lest ye die for and the serpent said to the woman ye shall not surely die for God don't know so we're talking of knowledge here remember now the tree of the knowledge the tree of the knowledge there is knowledge in the tree the central thing there is knowledge not fruit knowledge the tree of the knowledge are we together now if you have the tree of the knowledge of banana that tree will not when you eat banana from that tree it teaches you something the tree is a lecturer the fruit in the tree can teach men certain things are you getting what i'm saying now and now he's saying that god knows that in the day remember all of this will happen in a day both the death and this that you eat thereof the first thing is that your eyes shall be opened that means a kind of illumination will come to you and then ye shall be as what as gods knowing good and evil wow that means one characteristic feature between gods is that they have a supply of knowledge and the power to use that knowledge to produce good to produce evil are we together now that whoever can manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of good and manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of evil is no longer a man he didn't say he's the God of heaven but he said this one is not man are you getting the discussion now knowing good and evil verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was what now notice she didn't see anything evil again the tree is walking now this is how the tree works what did the woman see good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise what kind of wisdom we don't know but we know that there is wisdom in the tree she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her and he did eat you see that Adam was there with her next verse and truly like Satan said the eyes of them both were what? open so he didn't entirely lie he said this tree can open your eyes but he didn't say what that open eye will do and so their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and all of that and all of that now when you read all the drama that happened when God came down and said man what is happening he said this woman blah 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 just let's go to verse 11 I'll read just verse 11 and then I'll begin to teach and he said who told you that you were naked then he said hast thou because this knowledge you should not have gotten it there is no way as a man without an assistance your knowledge is limited although you are a man without sin this should not be given to you then he says have you eaten of the tree and he says I commanded you not to eat you read on and he said the woman you put the woman said the serpent and he was angry and began to curse them but something interesting happened he said man has become like one of us just follow me man has become like one of us I thought the Bible says he created man image and after his likeness now God is saying something is wrong man has become like one of us and for that we will not allow him in this state to eat of the tree of life again because if he takes of the tree of life you know the tree of life was designed to keep you living in whatever state you are so now that these guys the whole plan has been corrupted if we allow him to eat of the tree of life then redemption will no longer be possible so let's drive him out so that it can be possible to redeem this man are we together now please sit down right from genesis we see 
that there is a fight for knowledge. The Bible tells us that the first three, listen carefully, the first three was not called the tree of the knowledge of life. It was called the tree of life. But the second tree works by giving men information that it supplies you an information that gives your life good but with it eventually it destroys you are we together now jesus there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is interwoven in this system this cosmos that we live in please listen very carefully many people like Eve have not received the miracle of understanding to discern that the trees that they continue to partake of are poisonous trees that are ministering death to their destinies and death to their lives and so my exhortation really tonight is a wake-up call to open your eyes to something very deep about the destruction that is happening to many people that they do not know they continue to die daily not as paul said by their continual connection with this tree and that you will never be able to do much for the kingdom until you understand this in the name of jesus christ I look at lives today as a man of God I look at people's destinies and I see certain results in their lives that I wonder how those kinds of results would have been produced are you getting what I'm saying now yes I know that these results are a product of a philosophy a product of an ideology that has been sold by a system that has been sold by a sociological context that does not honor God nor have regard for the ways of God are we together now remember the tree of life based the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the Bible tells us it is very tempting when the woman saw it there was an attraction are we together now Many people's lives today have become a mess and has become complicated. I am almost afraid when I look at our society today and look at the level of confusion, the level of aimlessness that surrounds the lives of people. People are almost clueless about everything in life. The young and the old alike, the rich and the poor alike. And we do not know the source of this confusion. I want to show you tonight. If I can successfully show you and we pray, my assignment tonight has been fulfilled. Are we together? Colossians chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll read verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Read with me, please. Look up. One to read. Beware lest any man spoil you through what philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit after the traditions of men here's my key point and after the methodology the modus operandi the system of this world the greek word here is aeon an age and a mindset that is brought with that age that do not let the word spoiled here is plunder take advantage of do not let any man take advantage of you through philosophy through vain deceit through the traditions of men after the methodology there is a system that this world operates listen carefully there is a way and manner that has been sold humanity as a race have been scammed by a system a system that has advocated a way of life and a template of living and the bible says that compared to god's standard that template 
is wrong now but it's very difficult because the character of that tree is that it has good and we live in a society where we are governed by results which is an advantage for satan because then he can project the good that comes with that system and with it he can buy the loyalty of people by the time you can prove to me that a method is working regardless of the side effects are we together now we have products right now that are 60 percent um 60 percent potent in their result and we believe that those products are enough and we sell them so we live in a world where once there is an evidence that something works we package it and we go mainstream and we market it to people but we do not know that that good the bible says that on that is a strategy that satan projects the good in every evil thing no evil thing comes as evil even satan comes as an angel of light are you getting me now so the character of evil is such that it projects the good first so that you are baited by that good like you dangle a worm attempting to catch a fish and the fish comes hoping to eat the worm not knowing that there is a hook behind are we together now and then that fish is caught up by the hook that don't let any man spoil you there is a philosophy in this world there is a philosophy in this age that when men subscribe to the bible says the side effect is that it is as though an armed bandit came to your house and plundered you the confusion that is in people's lives today on almost every subject matter is a call for concern that we must get back to understanding the disaster that is encapsulated in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now society may not agree government may not agree because there are statistics to show that the tree has good are we together now so when you tell somebody come my dear when you tell someone um give your life to jesus and throw away some of the herbal things that were used in your village this lady will prove to you how that herbal medicine healed five people are you getting what i'm saying now everybody say good shout it again say good and the lady would tell you she's on five points now because they said any time is time for exam rob that thing before you go to the exam hall and my goodness did it work so now that lady will not listen to your proposition to say i should throw it is it just because it has a little side effect the benefits outweigh the side effects you will say the same way you say salt one pinch of salt cannot affect a whole you know bowl of soup you don't put the same size of vegetables as you do the salt yet sometimes just for putting a little more you can completely ruin that soup that's how evil is evil does not have to be the same size with good it just has to be present sufficient enough to create an effect are you getting me now you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt are you getting what i'm saying you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt that's why the bible says a little living a little not much a little please follow me very carefully this lady now can serve god but she will hold on to her charms because if the charms were 100 percent failed she would throw it obviously the devil knows nobody ever working with the devil has 100 percent evil no he doesn't work that way he's smart enough to know ask an armed robber why he's still stealing he will tell you the last stealing my god we had 11 million and that 11 million changed our life i even gave tight it looks good ask him now to stop stealing the memory of the 11 million will make sure he goes back to steal are you getting what i'm saying now evil blatantly 
will usually drive you away but the good component in it is what will give you the same power to remain so the bible says do not eat of that tree of good and evil there are philosophies my brothers and my sisters listen carefully there are mindsets there are belief systems that we have adopted that come with this age the bible tells us they are traceable to a tree they are traceable to a root that markets good to men and at the end destroys them thank you my dear the bible tells us again that this system that we live in has something called the wisdom of this age the wisdom of this age first corinthians chapter 2 i'm just trying to gather my scriptures before i begin to build you will be so blessed first corinthians chapter 2 paul is teaching the church in corinth and here's what he says first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect and so you are not confused Paul now begins to distinguish what that wisdom is that kind he says yet not the wisdom of that means this world has its own kind of wisdom wisdom by its character produces results it doesn't matter what kind of wisdom are we together now but the bible is saying there is wisdom that is not the wisdom of god it is the wisdom of this world there is even the wisdom that is the wisdom of the princes of this world hmm. but the bible says all of them come to naught. what does that mean that means the end of them is death is destruction the wisdom of this world the wisdom of the princes of this world that we pride ourselves in that we build the entire philosophy of our lives the bible says that wisdom whoever works with that dimension of knowledge doom and destruction is inevitable look at me please most of the issues in our world today are only symptoms of a bigger problem are we together most of the issues in our world today the issues that we face that we we believe are the issues that are depriving man and mankind from his dignity most of them are only symptoms of a bigger issue the same way someone can have headache and a doctor can say no this is not headache it is malaria the headache is a symptom of something meaning if you take panadol it may give you a temporary relief but you are not going to be healed from that malaria until you are properly treated we spend our time addressing symptoms we write books about symptoms listen carefully we hold conferences on symptoms and very few people are willing to go to the root and deal with the foundation that brings about this this tragic problem of mankind the ideas of this world have made our lives complicated the life of the average person living in today's world is as complicated as a gadget this wisdom we have adopted like a virus they have created a web of complication they have robbed us of the simplicity of life destroyed everything about us family life has been broken down to nonsense the dignity of responsibility has been broken down to nonsense meritocracy godliness all of these virtues that build up society and advance men they had been attacked for many years and now we are seeing the effect we have enjoyed the good of that tree for a long time 
and right now people are beginning to see the evil you are trying to run away but the tree said you received all of me you received the advancement that i gave you you received the technology that i gave you are we together now you received all of the enlightenment that i gave you now the other side of the equation is opening up and the war the crime the decadence and people are saying what kind of world are we in not knowing that is a food we ate and now we are paying for everything and let me tell you my brothers and my sisters that tree is continue to dangle every day if we keep eating of that tree it will not only kill us it will kill our children and our children's children we have been so sucked into this system we do not even know we are in deception you can be so deceived and misled that you are not even aware that is deception underdevelopment security issues marital issues financial issues joblessness all of these things are symptoms of subscribing to a philosophy and a way of life that is antichrist and not built on life that tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it was just a diplomatic way to say the tree of life and a tree of death because the end of it is death there is a way that cement right to a man he says but the end thereof are the ways of death as i counsel people i am coming to the conclusion that if we do not re-examine our philosophies there is no hope this issue is bigger than counseling this issue is bigger than laying on of hands this issue is bigger than a church service or a conference this is a deception that is institutional and it will take people who understand the holy spirit listen carefully people who understand the ways of god to summon the courage to say no something is wrong my grandfather followed this way my father followed this way now a system is forcing me to follow that way and you turn and say no way and receive the courage to fight to victory the contentions that will come by your refusal to eat of that tree write this down the world system that advocates this tree of good and evil thrives on three major things the world system that means the antichrist system of operation unfortunately that our society is built upon thrives on three things number one on godliness on godliness today's world our civilization today is against godliness let me explain to you what that means that means to do well in today's world it is mandatory you must act like there's no god are you getting what i'm just saying now if you want to do well in today's world you have to indoctrinate yourself and culture yourself into acting as though god does not exist and the world today will applaud you that means that this babylonian system this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is strangling away god consciousness from all of us and from the fabric of society the world system thrives on godlessness that means that the more you are aligned to this world it will make you in a way and manner that you do not see value for god again by destroying every christian monument in schools for instance that can help men be aware are we together now all those things are strategies to make sure that our children the same way this little boy now does not know what a typewriter looks like that is the same way one day people will not know anything about God. You will say in the beginning was the word. They said, is that a novel? They say, what do you mean is that a novel? That's King James. They say, well, I'm not aware of what you are saying. That is the goal of this system. That a day will come 
when when you say bible study it's like you are telling a child lemonade and he says what is that what is bible sir i don't know what bible is and you say it's a book that contains the words of god he said who is god we will get there if a church does if the church does not rise and listen to what i'm telling you Today you have a program on TV, you mention Jesus or mention God, they edit it. But they can leave explicit words in movies even for children. Don't mind that rating thing they write. That means something is wrong. And the church is watching and we do not understand that we are being forced to eat from the tree that contains good and evil. Ungodliness right now this is not this is not a generation of ignorance again Satan has stopped using ignorance as a strategy this generation is too enlightened to entertain ignorance so he has started marketing this good and evil it's difficult to keep someone ignorant now because this is an inquisitive generation they want to know and so Satan says instead of hiding the knowledge let's not hide it again let us corrupt it and market it so knowledge is available and affordable but largely let me tell you my brothers and my sisters over 70 percent of the information that mold and make the mind of people is a Babylonian information that contains good and evil are we together you hear what they teach your children in school. On one side, you are happy that the children are learning biology. But on the other side, you know you are in trouble. Because good and evil. And you get what I'm saying now? Yes. Ungodliness. We have to preserve God consciousness. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will never, never preserve God consciousness. When I was growing up, 90% of our discussions were around school and God. That was it. Right now, the average young child, the average teenager will talk about applications, apps, almost a thousand times before anything spiritual will be mentioned. Not God. Most young people are now spiritual and are now sociological, not spiritual. They are doing everything. That's why they are promoting all the human activities that neutralize God consciousness, like sports, like music. These are platforms that, um, that is, 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 very, very, is very, very civil. And so it doesn't allow the things of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's a strategy. And God is waking us up on godliness. Number two. These three of the knowledge of good and evil that makes up the world system operates by distorting spiritual patterns. Write it down. This system operates by distorting spiritual patterns is one of the most dangerous effects of this wisdom of the world. It distorts spiritual patterns. I want you to listen carefully. Isaiah chapter 5 we'll read from verse 20 to 24 Isaiah 5 20 read with me we're reading from 20 to 24 one to read woe to them that call evil good talk to me and good evil that put darkness for light uh-huh and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter what kind of a generation is this that replaces everything is an overhaul nothing was spared if it is good this society calls it evil if it is light they call it darkness if it is sweet they call it bitter verse 22 21 woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight uh-huh 
Woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. 23. We justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Do you know what this means? That means they force you through their life and they compel you to bend until you are out of God's pattern. He said they take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So you send your child to school as a responsible young boy from a Christian family and a system has been built. By the time that boy is three years in that school, it has taken away the righteousness from the righteous. Four. Next verse. Therefore, as fire devoured the stubble and flame consumed the chaff, so shall their root be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust. Notice that they once blossomed, but the Bible says it will go up as dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. In God's design and in his dealings with men, he always creates patterns. Listen carefully. God's patterns are his methodology, his way of achieving his will. It is not enough to obey God. We must understand his pattern. There is a pattern for wealth and finance in the kingdom. There is a pattern for marriage in the kingdom. There is a pattern for ministry. There is a pattern for success. But now we have a system that is forcing an ideology and even upon believers that makes us to violate patterns. Are we together now? One of our dear ladies here, she may be following online. I think a few, a few, maybe about a month ago, she left for the US. And when she got to the US, I think it was just like a few days or a week, she just called me. And I know there are people from US following, so I, I, I don't mean to insult any culture, but she told me that apostle, there's, there's something wrong. She said, my roommates are all lesbians. And there is a problem. If I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm right. Because she said it's like they are supposed to be believers. And now she has to relate with them. Because there is not like here. Yeah, just for showing any sign of um, discrimination as it were. They can sue you. And of course, if you are not, not a citizen of that nation, they can take you out immediately. And this lady was confused. completely confused and saying what is all this I come from a place in Zaria where even the person who is not doing well can be a pastor somewhere else and now I'm faced with roommates that are vocally part of a system let me tell you I don't mean to insult anyone but I told you most of those things are symptoms of a problem the problem is that we have deviated from God's pattern are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. The divorce rate in marriages is something that is scary, including Christian marriages. One out of every two marriages will not last 10 years. Now, please don't feel bad if anything has happened to your marriage. I'm teaching here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know why? Because two of you come, husband and wife, people have created their own patterns. Call good evil and evil good it was God who defined how marriage works society has now mentored people into creating their own laws about marriage is it not arrogant for you to come and meet something and not consult the person who created it and change the laws it's like coming to my house and meet my tap running and I come back and see that you've rewired the tap to the back of the house by what authority did you do this? In my house. So we have done it in ways that we cannot imagine. In my, my laptop, I have the photo of a woman who married Sardine. Big Sardine, not the small one you use. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we together? Side by side, you see them there. I have it in my laptop. 
Now, let me tell you this. Believers were civilized people. I'm not, I'm not those kind of people that would teach you to not, not, no, no, no. But I'm saying something is wrong. We have to admit that something is wrong. Are we together now? These people have their ideas. They have money. They have everything. Yet the marriage does not work. And they are wondering. Because everybody, the Babylonian system has indoctrinated this lady. You are not under any man. You are a lady. You are you know you are a wonderful person don't let any man look down on you society is these men are looking down on women this and that and the lady says yes if it's because of your money i will get my own job i will buy my own car i can be lord of myself if you drive me i can go and get my three bedroom flat we think it's a nice thing because if a lady proposes this in the world they clap for you they stand up and wave their hands and god sits on his throne and says, this is not what i designed what are you designing like this already as i'm saying it you see how surprised how many of you have been sucked into it as i'm saying it now it's paining you which is a sign that god is delivering you because already you can see how the thing has sucked us and then the men we have our own we are even the ones that are more sucked into this thing because we need money we need to provide and we have deviated from god's pattern right now respect in marriage is based on who is richer not what god said i'm working i'm earning thirty thousand. you are earning ten thousand. you are not worth my respect and society says yes one one life coach somewhere who is not born again has never read the bible is now writing books and pushing it to the church because they know we buy everything are we together yes something is wrong a distortion of patterns let me tell you why patterns are important because patterns forerun the glory when patterns are violated the glory will never be seen never be seen there are ways today my brothers and my sisters i don't say this in any sarcastic way but there are ways go for pastors conferences and see how they teach men to raise money to run churches you will be amazed and you will be surprised because there is a pattern a babylonian system is marketing a strategy remember that the ark of god was supposed to be carried by a formula a man decided to invent a system to say let's let's make it easier for men and that man died what did he do that was wrong he only changed patterns it was violation of pattern that made a man lose his throne saul in the bible it was not in his office to offer sacrifices but because samuel was wasting time and the people started putting pressure on saul saul said what nonsense is this priesthood thing get me everything let me offer sacrifices as soon as he offered sacrifices samuel came and said what have you done he said you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and do this and god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this your throne is taken away from you and samuel tried to weep and cry and god who is full of mercy said how long will you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king in other words this guy is out of my program god your god every time the reason why we never see the glory of god in our churches we never see the glory of god in our families could it be that we are there eating of the tree of the knowledge of the of good and evil and is indoctrinating us to act and believe in ways that are violating god's pattern gideon began to cry and told the angel he said why do we not see the miracles that our fathers told us and he began to tell gideon there are idols there are things to be destroyed when it was time for elijah to command fire from heaven he didn't just say fire come he said set me 12 altars there is a pattern set me 12 altars put water on it put this and fire came Cain and Abel offered sacrifices one was accepted one was rejected God is not only the God of the heavens he's a God of patterns God looks at how you did it not just that you did it hmm. patterns thank you Evangelion. Exodus chapter 25 We'll read verse 9 
and then we'll read verse 20 very quickly please God is taking us somewhere tonight according to all that I showed thee listen after the pattern of the tabernacle this was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness and God was instructing Moses that according to all that I showed you after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof so shall thou make it in other words it was not Moses' idea a blueprint was given his assignment was to replicate it there are many things see in your dealing with God you will not need too much of creativity you will need obedience it is when you are executing his will on earth that you will need in your dealing with God there are few things that will be your idea I know we don't like this how you know you are working with God is that a major part of your dealing is yes sir yes sir when it becomes in my opinion that's not God you are working with creativity is not for the secret place creativity is a system of dominion you don't bring creativity when you are in the secret place it is obedience it is your heart opening to say Lord not my will but your will be done Exodus 25 25 verse 40 and look that thou make them after what their pattern which was shown you not which you guessed not which you guessed a pattern was shown you make sure that you make it after their pattern very quickly give us chapter 40 and verse 16 40 and verse 16 I'm showing you that God is a God of patterns 40 and verse 16 read with me please one to read thus did Moses uh -huh, according to all that the Lord commanded him go to verse 33 we are reading now verse 33 to 35 it says and he read up the court he's about to finish now listen carefully round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate read the last sentence everyone one to go so Moses finished the work he finished everything according to pattern next verse and then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation God supervised until he followed the patterns to the dot when Moses finished the work he said God I finished God said I'm ready to come the cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of God filled the tabernacle next verse and Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation why because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of God filled it if the glory of God is not upon your church could there be an explanation that something in the building or the system of that church is disaligned with divine patterns because if it is built according to pattern the glory of God is like a stamp you obeyed to the latter if I look at your family and I do not see the glory of God there is a pattern that you are not following are we together now I can look at your family and I see chaos here and there husband beating wife wife beating husband I must kill you I tell you someone is violating patterns if both people walk with divine patterns there will be glory that means the glory of God is also a confirmation that his patterns have been duly followed every time you finish that which you do it's important to look around and find out where is the glory of God in it as proof that this was done according to pattern could it be that the joblessness that is plaguing young people in Nigeria could it be the reason why many of us are languishing in certain intense levels of hardship we may be well-meaning but could it be that we are violating divine patterns everybody say patterns say it again say patterns so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil causes you to be distorted from God's pattern 
there is a way God designed that marriage happens if you have to go on Facebook and WhatsApp to start doing this you may get a beast who is first a man before he becomes a beast which is consistent with the way that tree works is first good before evil so you meet somebody on Facebook and he says I'll go and see your parents you are the lily of the valley are we together now and that person later becomes the beast of your destiny why because patterns God designed marriage come please to be one man and one woman don't feel bad by the time this guy says one woman is not enough and brings another woman everybody say patterns patterns start fighting from the realm of the spirit because the way God designed this thing is such that one woman the woman has to be alone for you to see the best of her in marriage by the time it is now two or ten or five something must go wrong it doesn't matter what they sign patterns have been distorted are we together when a man of 50 years old is writing why everybody say patterns have been distorted now listen i'm not i'm not being sarcastic i'm saying that it is usual for that man to not concentrate he is not supposed to be that alert and focused just like that because that longevity of time has accommodated too many things that are more serious than the subject matter so it is good that a young man bear his yoke in his youth lamentation chapter 3 that god says young men walk your walks while it is day night will come when you cannot walk it's a pattern starting early in life is a pattern that's why when the spirit of delay comes upon a family it makes sure that the first person is in is writing ssc at 25 it's not about delay satan is doing everything to make you go out of pattern it is why god in his mercy introduced a mystery called restoration are you seeing that now restoration is doing something to your life to bring you back in pattern when a woman has been barren and she's 60 years old with no child the devil knows that according to the normal course of life there will be a problem giving birth or at least giving birth to a very healthy child are you seeing that now satan knows that god is a god of patterns and so he supplies us knowledge that makes us to be and act in ways that continue to be defiant to God's pattern because his advantage in our life is that when we are out of pattern he doesn't need to pray against us the glory was designed to locate patterns and confirm it is God speaking to us I like you to look at your family as you are sitting down and suddenly realize that could this be why we never saw the hand of God in our family we were Christians oh my father my mother loved God served God with all his and her heart Lord why is this family this way why are we not seeing your glory I'm showing you we are eating of a tree and the more we keep eating of that tree every time the glory comes to your house it cannot rest and the glory continues to search for a resting place and sometimes it will wait for one full generation until you arrive that's why some of you are standing up to say lord that glory must rest that glory has been hovering around my family since 1951 and nobody has aligned enough to allow that glory come lord see he said lord and now arise oh lord he said come to your resting place until then god said i don't have a place to rest and solomon said no way we have to make for you make for you a place i can tell you i understand a bit about the glory of god i know why many people do not experience the glory 
there are spiritual patterns. Babylon. You eat of that tree. Notice what happened to Adam. As soon as they ate of the tree, what happened? The glory lifted. It was the glory that covered them. They didn't even know whether they were naked or not. They didn't need clothes because the Shekinah of God covered them. As soon as they ate of that tree, imagine that every day you are eating of that tree. Think of what is happening to your life and think of what you are programming for your children's children already. So every time our fathers kept bowing in that shrine, they thought they were just paying homage. But something, Ichabod, the glory continued to move back and back and back and back and back. By the time you came to the scene, there was no glory again. Eleven ladies, beautiful ladies, no man to marry them. Thirteen ladies, no child. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, it's not just about prayer. When we return to the pattern, it's with a rush. The glory will come. When Moses finished, not when he started, God kept watching. Finish it and let my glory come. You know, from my paternal side, I never saw any blessed person. I think the most blessed person was my dad. And it's not like he was any blessed. I said, what kind of cause is this? How can you be so hardworking and love God? My father was a very honest man, loved God, but I, I said, no, no. Someone has to be angry oh, this night and say, no, my family has been eating from a tree. Eating from the tree can mean bowing to an idol. Eating from the tree can be an indoctrination that your salary is where your wealth is. You think it's a nice statement, but it's something that has been sold to you. So when you hear things like all blessings come from God, they only pass through men. It's an ideology that fights everything you've been taught about job. Oh, the boss said, I can waste your life now. And you say, sir, it's true. Ah, and the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. I'm not confused. I know where my help comes from. Who is an arrogant man born of a woman that sits on a chair and says he will frustrate you? When there is God, An average man of God has been taught now that there are things that if they are not in your church, members will not come. Please don't get me wrong. I know if there's any man of God phoning, I'm, I'm an excellent person. But right now, we are doing a lot of nonsense that will not help us see the glory of God. Nonsense. Members can drink tea, they can eat rice, they can eat yam and go. Because there is a pattern. And I, if I be lifted, that's the pattern. I will Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but it's not given to men to bring increase. Increase is a mystery that only the Lord of the harvest knows the formula. You say something now, people insult you and say you are arrogant, but the result is not showing. I want you tonight to start thinking the convictions that I hold, where did it come from? Where did it come from? There are many well-behaved ladies in this place. You started very well with God until you read a book. Until you joined some group of friends who told you, blast gentlemen. Don't talk anybody that talks. Just give it to them. Don't be doing like a mumu girl. Men are not like that. I say, eh, that's how it works. You ate something and from that day your glory went away. And the kind of men who would ordinarily come, you find out that men increase, but it's all nonsense kind of men. Men that you cannot carry to your parents. Something, a pattern, has gone wrong. The one factor that was the reason why the glory of God was on you, the devil now came and lied to you. Why be respect yourself be a well-behaved girl be all or let me tell you if you act like you're a mumu naive girl men will not come and you say okay i must reinvent myself to be a happening lady and that was the day your destiny helper went away there are many pastors some of you here have come here for impartation let me tell you i submit to you i am a student of patterns 
there are things that I know. I found them. God taught me. I said, Lord, I will never bend to them. Years ago, I remember saying some things and I was insulted. I was criticized because of it. I said things about the glory of God. I said things about increase. And I said the way we are going, if people do not understand these things, they will pay for it. People laughed at me. And today is unfortunate for many people. People see some of the results that God is producing. It's not a charm. It's patterns. When a pattern is complete, listen to me. My sister, you may come from a family where nobody knows you. Stay with God's pattern. Let his glory rest on you. You will join people to wonder and say, God, what, what am I doing? And God says, I'm the God of patterns. Man of God, follow God's pattern for ministry. And you will be afraid of what God will do through your life. We like cutting corners. Cutting corners. Cutting corners. I want a ministry, but I want it now. I want power, but I want it fast. I want this, but I want it now. And we find out that somewhere along the line, the patterns are distorted. And we never see the power of God. Are we together? You do what I'm telling you now to do and see how society will laugh at you. Because we have trained people that the more godless we are, the more happening they are. You see that? So this gentleman now is in the house and somebody advises him, don't give your wife money because if you give her money, she will not respect you. That's what is in vogue now. A demonic pattern. Because loyalty and submission was supposed to be by revelation, not manipulation. Now the man is manipulating the woman. And one day her own Ahitophel too will advise her. And as soon as he advises her, she will get a job and start a business and arrest the husband to prove to him that I am the man in the house. My brothers and my sisters, we're in trouble if we don't return to pattern. Yes. Many marriages do not work because the men are not under authority. You've heard me say it. I have read a lot of books about marriage and I respect it. But I submit to you that many of the books are dealing with symptoms. Do you know, just for a man not having the fear of God, there are hundred problems that can arise from that relationship. Now, you can write a book to solve those various hundred problems, but the root cause is that this man is not saved, period. When a man is not saved, the tendencies that can come are infinite. When a man is not under authority, he can beat the living daylight out of this woman and say, who cares? I'm the Lord of my life. I don't listen to no man. The arrogance of Nebuchadnezzar. It's a pattern. Why do doctors specialize? Why do they look at certain sicknesses and they can show you immediately because the sicknesses have patterns. Malaria has a pattern. Typhoid has a pattern. A doctor can do this, just do a quick examination and say, wow, quickly, you need to see a consultant. Something is wrong. Without the patterns, they have been taught to identify patterns. That's it. There is a pattern that gives you wealth in this kingdom. Many believers will not listen. The world has its own system. It will work, but wait to see what it will give you later on. It will give you high blood pressure. You will be a liar. You will be a thief. You will destroy your life. Destroy the integrity of your family. So two of us, come Sheung. Two of us can stand right now. And I have, I have some money here. I have 1,000 Naira. Watch this. He got his one, hold your own. Hold it high. He's hold, he got his 1,000 by a Babylonian system. And I got my 1,000 from a kingdom system. You would think that two of us are holding 1,000. No. He's holding 1,000 minus five years gone in his life. That's why the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added. That means there is a kind of blessing that adds too. 
if the blessing of the Lord adds not that means there is a type that you can get but with it you will get this that's what happened to many of our parents by the time they are 55 years he found out that because of Horsley and the way he pushed like that he's about to retire but he's not hearing again come on to me Jesus let's listen to him now let's listen to Jesus come on to me all you that are weary and heavy laden he promises that he will give you rest this is what many people can kill for look at this this thing you see many people have left God because of it many people are going to hell fire because of it yet they never find it and God tells you look there is a way I can give you this such that you will serve me and the world says the way I give you this is the, the more you denounce Jesus the more I give it to you so you keep saying Jesus I don't love you and mammon says that's how it works by the time you have plenty of this you have not only left the cross you have left everything God so when you come and say I can have this and yet have Jesus Babylon says you are joking but this is what God is training you into doing that you can have this and if God says let it go you drop it because you are aware that this is not your true value your true value is Christ we must return tonight to patterns otherwise we are going to suffer remember that every result is governed by something that something is a pattern the result you get is brought by the glory of God I've seen a little bit of the glory of God and I know when a man has found a pattern for the glory give up on that man if you want to try to take the glory in that area you are wasting your time for as long as the pattern is kept the glory will always always without fail tomorrow I'm in Lagos preaching at a conference and I know that their lives will never be the same because there is a pattern it's not because I'm Joshua Selman ah Elijah said bring me 12 stones I know how to make fire come from heaven man of God you are not a blessing to your members if you do not understand the pattern that brings the hand of God there is a pattern that men do on earth that brings favor there is a pattern that brings speed there is a pattern that brings the anointing I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord I was glad there is something in the house of the Lord that changes the lives of people but today we are eating trees that make the things of God do you know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil teaches you that it is in the abundance of hustling you prosper have you had those teachings and have you seen people write books on them have you not read in your Bible that except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it? The world will laugh at you for saying that. Have you not read again that the Lord said, except he watches over a city, he says, that the watchmen watch it in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Does that look like somebody's life that you know? Wake up in the morning, sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. He said, but he gives his beloved sleep. And you see, when you struggle and it does not work, you will be angry at those who are getting it easy because patterns are supposed to create spiritual ease. So you can step into a place and gyrate like a herbalist. The power of God will fall. It is going to fall. And you keep looking at the ladies and nobody is shouting and you are angry. What is no, no sister shouting? And yet, someone comes with the ark and knows how to put 12 stones together. And all of a sudden, you are hosting a dimension of glory. And you stand and watch and say, how are these people doing it? He has to be the devil. No, sir. Patterns. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh, God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. 
many years ago, the Lord told me something. He said, don't do what everybody is doing. Just listen to me and follow me. I was stupid enough to follow. Lord, where do I go this way? Lord, where do I go? I remember when the Lord told me, put Koinonia messages, the audio, put it on your Facebook page and let it go. Lord, what is that? Many ministries raise their money to run the church primarily through the media arm. The media arm of every ministry is one of the major ways that God blesses them with. Lord, if you are doing that, how then are you going to bless the ministry? But Lord, how do you put a message on Facebook and then you said you will give it wings? The patterns of God. He uses the foolish things. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. A lady was talking to me that she was somewhere, one of our ladies, she used to be in the worship team, that she was somewhere on Kekena Pep and the person on Kekena Pep was playing my message. This was in, I think it was in Wari or so or Bielsa. Now, that one is no more advertisement. There is a finger. When you see results that are produced by patterns, you will know that this one is God. The pride of our generation will never allow us to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. Many young people do not know how to succeed and they will never go to God. They will consult with all kinds of equally proud people like them and come up with all kinds of formula that is not consistent with the ways of God. That formula may have worked in 1970, but I guarantee it will not work in today's world. Listen, young people in Nigeria, we need to receive the formula for our advancement because computers have, re have replaced men a day will come when almost everything will be done by computers i don't know what the employment issue will be but there is there is a system in this kingdom when there was famine only two sets of people were spared the king and the prophet the king and the prophet did not go through famine any other person in between suffered the squalor of it Alagbara, you are the mighty God, and you are so you. you are the glorious Alagbara. people who will tell you about our teachings that they can stand and sit strangers I shared with you the testimony of a gentleman that bought flash new flash in the case flash drive bought a new flash drive in the case like that given to him the gentleman opened it went to slot it in his laptop and there was koinonia messages brand new flash because it's not men that market this thing they are spirits Ask Jacob in the house of Laban. Do you not see that there was a pattern that made Laban left for three days? How many days? Three days. He came back after three days and saw that his cattle had changed in three days. Do animals get pregnant in three days? But a spiritual pattern was downloaded to the earth realm and things change. That means there is something we can receive from heaven. Remember our popular scripture in this ministry. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth. There is a pattern. My brothers and my sisters. Listen to me. I want you to be careful what everybody calls the way. Did you hear what I said? Don't be afraid of being controversial. Be careful what everybody says is the way. This is how people make it in life. This is how people marry these days. No, sir. Many of our young children are being destroyed right now in churches because in a bid to create a Western or a 21st century context, we are robbing these young children of the quality of knowing God. Look at Islam. They have not changed their pattern. 
the way they train children regardless whether it's in Saudi Arabia or whatever the pattern is the same they know the potency of that formula is God speaking to us let me give us one more and then we'll pray is God speaking to someone tonight so if I have not seen the glory of God in my life the explanation tonight is that there could be that I am eating I am partaking of an information that may be mainstream it may be popular when I talk to this my adorable gentlemen they are absolutely great people they are going very far you see that yes they are going very far but you see there is a pattern that people believe if you follow you will rise fast believe me it is nonsense any pattern that is not consistent with God's word will not take you far it will throw you up and crash you down that's why you see people rise and shine for two years and then they say their time has come and gone but is that what your Bible says doesn't it say that the path of the just talk to me is as a shining light so what is this up today and down tomorrow because there is a pattern if you have to put money in my pocket and bribe my way to making the world know you your success is at the mercy of my loving you the day I don't love you you are in trouble but when God is the one who leads you you will be surprised when you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. Say, when you barren for five years and they will tell her there's one man is in our village he has the gift he has the gift all you need to do he has the gift and the woman says no I know God's pattern I know that that tree carries good so it's possible to go there and have a child but something will come with that child will come the trouble in your family and then the woman stays and uses her faith and the day God is ready to visit her, God will not give her a child. The woman will carry t triplets, one child being equivalent to ten children. You know that there are people who alone, they are equivalent to a nation. They give birth to one child. Because of that one child, somebody you have been trying to see for years comes to visit you. Five people get a job because a child was born. Is that a child? A child that does what a CEO cannot do. A destiny helper from birth. One week from birth is already a destiny helper. And as adult as we are, we couldn't help ourselves. A child helps us. That's not a child. That's a miracle. That's a breakthrough. Number three. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil thrives on self-centeredness I want you to listen to my message Christ-centeredness I preached it I think earlier this year the language I I want it my way my way is the language of Babylon my way is proof you are eating of that tree men who eat of that tree have a way they talk it must be my way listen listen Oh, generation of young people, let's listen. My way, my formula. We live in a generation right now where there is an obsession for having things happen our way. I want it my way. And we take it a step further to force others to also do it our way. That's the height of selfishness now. most great relationships are destroyed because of the I factor myself 
I want it my way. It has to be as it pleases me. Unfortunately, when you come to the kingdom, you learn that the more I goes down, the more glory rises. And I, Jesus, if I be lifted up, not you, John said that I will decrease. Not just him, that self, I, decreases and that you increase. James chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Self-centeredness is one of the biggest tragedies of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. James chapter 3. Give us 14 and 15. The Bible says something very instructive. It says, listen, but if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. 15. It says this wisdom. So there is a wisdom that is as a result of self and greed and bitterness. My selfishness and my greed can make me act in a way that looks like wisdom, but the motivation, are we together now? The motivation for that wisdom is bitterness, self-centeredness. The Bible says that kind of wisdom descended not from above. Remember the knowledge of the good, of good and evil. It says, but is earthly, is sensual, and is devilish. So simply because I want to be the one to shine, I can say, Sam, um, because there is a gun inside that room, I say, Sam, why don't you go to that room and go and help me carry a basket? But the goal is so that he will be implicated, so that he will get out of the way for me to shine alone. It looks like wisdom, but the motivation is self-centeredness. The Bible says that wisdom is devilish. Our world today, and sadly, even in ministry, is full of self-centeredness. Romans chapter 16, quickly please, verse 17 and 18. While I was studying this, I found this scripture and it blessed me. Tonight is a very strong admonishment and I want you to listen carefully. 16 and 17. Okay, read with me. One, two, go. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark them which cause what? Division and offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And do what? Avoid them. Next verse. For they are such that serve not our Lord Jesus, but they are. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the heart of the simple. Your Bible. So, I can be looking for money and I can say, do you know what? Um, the Lord gave me a prophetic instruction that all of us are going to do this and that and that. All of us are going to raise to 2,000 and come and touch my shoe and your life will change. And God knows he didn't give that instruction. I just calculated that if there are 5,000 people here and everybody gives to 2,000, highest, plus or minus, I've already done the mathematics. And then I come and say, oh, God said no. Their belly is their God. Their belly. A man's belly can be his God, meaning you can serve your stomach. It's amazing what people do so that they can feel satisfied and don't care the effect on others and on the kingdom. That's why people can kill. I can look at this gentleman and plot with an assassin. Look at this, these touts around that steal phones and do all of that. They can come and cut someone's hand cut someone's neck to collect a phone of 25,000 and go and sell it 5,000. That is self-centeredness at work. 
the amount it would take for that victim to treat himself or herself may even be more than what they sold that phone for. But because they need to smoke now, everybody, even if it means death, listen, the moment the comfort of people does not become a factor for your consideration in your desire, you are self-centered. I want this. It must be my way. Brothers, we want this. I'm the man of the house. It must be my way. I stamp it. Ladies, I'm the woman of the house. I'm not the one that married you. You are the one that married me. It must be my way. And the naughty children come. I'm not the one that gave her this death to the say their own. Selfishness. I wish you... <laughs> who Jesus himself stripped himself of his glory and came to the earth for God so loved, not himself, for God so loved the world. I have loved thee with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Selfishness. Lord, bless me so that everybody in my family will know that I'm not a small man. My elder brother who is shouting, Lord, bless me. Let me disgrace somebody for you. And God says, me? What do you think I am? Your mate? God sees my heart and I stand before you. I say this. I don't know how many things I do in my life considering myself as the chief benefactor. God is my witness. There are things I do for people today that I sit down sometimes and I think and I say, Kai, you man, now I will. I talk to myself, I say, now for you, Joshua Selman. When you do not have a heart for God and people, you are eating of the tree of life of knowledge of good and evil the tree of life takes the attention from you to others are we together now as a preacher if your whole church is around you what you can get from members how they can clap for you then that means you're in trouble let me tell you true ministry is not about the preacher it's about the blessed people that God brings so that they are raised, so that they are equipped, so that their lives are blessed. I sit down here many times and I find tears when I see people stand to testify about the marvelous things that the word of God did for them. Listen. I have found out that there are not many things that are important in life. Did you hear what I said? I have found out that if you walk with God's ways, there are not many things in your entire lifetime that are really important. The complications that come that our lives bring are a web that the Babylonian system created for us. So we have depression. Go to the village you will hardly find people with high blood pressure. For some of them, it's because they are not enlightened. But for some of them, through the wisdom of the ancient, they know the things that really matter. Did you know that when all is said and done in this life, there are not many things that are important. As busy as we are, 6 o'clock in the morning, we're on our way going. 12 o'clock, we're on our way going. We do this and kill ourselves, trying to eat, trying to gain relevance. I must buy the suit of 200,000 so that they will know. And that self-inflicted pain leads you to do things that you have no business doing. The moment you buy the 200,000 Naira suit, the person you want to wear it for, you hear that they've made the person a senator. And you feel stupid for laboring for one year to prove a point.
listen I have seen people who died trying to impress others I've seen people who died trying to create something in their life that it was not part of God's template for them meet a man on a deathbed right now and tell him what do you desperately want he will not say an estate he will not say I need an extra wife he will not say I need a male fast <clears throat> the only thing he will cry for is give me more time that means time is the most valuable thing and if God ever gives you time you have everything but we can waste time to look for what is less than time. God gave you time to serve him. Time to love him. Time to seek him. We were on our way going to, um, I think it was while we were going to Mubi. While we were going to the airport, I was talking to my people. And I told them, I said, guys, do you know that this you people's thing that you have forced me to buy has reduced my productivity by at least 10 percent and they were amazed i said i don't have a problem with it but um you can sit down with somebody for 20 minutes and not even ask him his name because someone else is talking to you and the person who is talking to you can even have gone to be with the lord yet he's talking to you and somebody that is alive that can help you now you see that everybody people have had accidents typing text while driving people have done all kinds of things you see someone stand by the roadside shouting alone and just nodding with the earpiece. these things are turning us into fools we have to remind ourselves that we are the highest of God's creation I'm not against excellence don't get me wrong but something is critically wrong that we must trust God for it's a mind control system it's controlling us right now when you stand people look at you and they look at the phone you are holding they see one kind of thing they say okay you can stay there that's a society that is depraved of the formula so it puts pressure someone who is busy saving money for something is under pressure let me carry this there are some you I, I thank God because it doesn't allow me to read the prayer items of miracle service I'm sure I would have edited some before presenting them to God I said this is nonsense God please don't waste your time there's a crucial issue here someone is dying leave this iPhone issue and kill the person dying so I can go to the place of prayer and spend three hours and that three hours is not because I love God and his purposes the three hours is because I'm manipulating the hand of God to meet my need oh God if you give me a good job and you give me an iPhone Lord you too you know you'll be glorified and God says how how present your cause there's no problem how will I be glorified I say well Lord they will respect me and say have you have you found out how many times you mentioned your name in that equation not a careless God I don't waste and yet another person is doggedly involved and said Lord I know there is nothing that I have that is not yours and while he's talking God is telling someone give him the latest iPhone every year he said God I don't need it he said me I want you to need it that's God for you It's amazing how God can take someone else's prayer request and give another person who really seeks him. Please, when you go to the secret place, don't waste your time. Learn how to get God's heart. Nobody comes with his heart without his hands. If you invite my heart, my hand will follow. If you invite my hand, I can keep my heart far while my hand goes. Get his heart. And you will see what his hand will do. It's the hand that will remove the heart and put it for you. But with that heart will come more than you have ever imagined. I see God do things in my life and I see God do things in this ministry that sometimes... This God, ba, I want you to believe him. I will never bow to Babylon. 
is a corrupted system. I have seen the fallacy of this system. They are arrogant. Even one hour to their destruction, they will still be arrogant. They have deceived many people today. The Babylonian system has made many people to go to hell. Are you aware of that? There are people who would have been on their way to heaven, but a system deceived them. They deceive many of our parents to not love God. They embrace education, but they left God. Believing that they will be on their job forever, they forgot that demons are still on earth. While they were promoted, their inability to be connected to God didn't give them the opportunity to make exploits. And their lives are almost miserable today. Young people lie to themselves. If you take this and smoke this, you are a man. And it sells a system and you embrace it. Let me tell you, I introduce to you once again a system that is superior. Maybe controversial for a while. But the results are like day and night. You will rise above men, men and watch life in wonder. Yes, it's true. I've made my choice. I really have. I'm not going to run my life based on a depraved system that has no respect for God. I will not make money at the expense of my relationship with God. No, sir. That is devilish. Money and God are not the same. I will never allow any brilliant financial expert make me believe money and God is the same. No. In the beginning, God, not dollars. In the beginning, God, not Naira. In the beginning, God, not NMPC. In the beginning, God, not APU. In the beginning, God. And he says he's Omega too. So whatever happens in between, I'm sure that he's still there. I live a very happy life, truly speaking, and I live a very peaceful life. Do you know why? Because I have learned in my life, there are very finite things I'm doing with my entire life. The things I'm doing with my life, there are not many. These are the things I live for. These are the things my entire course on earth will be for. I don't have time to waste on nonsense. There's no time wasting to prove any point. High blood pressure. If they tell you I have high blood pressure, well, pray for me, but I don't think it's true. I sleep like a baby. I wake up happily. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. Wake up tomorrow morning and stand by the road and see the anger of people. He's alone. Nobody's on the road yet. He's already angry. Honing alone and angry. This wicked world. Why is life like this? And God says, come up to me. Say, no, God, stay out of my life. And others even say, it's because you came into my life. Have you heard people say that? If the devil ever puts that thought in your mind, my brothers and my sisters, cast it. That is because God came into my life. That's why I'm not lifted. If it was not this God thing, I would have quietly bribed my way. I would have been in NMPC now. And people regret and make it look like God, you are a disadvantage. Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Nina, yes, Bazankoma. on your own convictions if you don't fear God you can't make your children fear God they will fear what you fear you fear money you will raise your children like that whatever you serve is what they will serve you say as for me and my house as for me and my house I've made a choice I want you to join me make this choice make this choice as for me money will not stand between me and God fame will not stand between me and God this devilish system it doesn't mean we should run away from the world we cannot we are in the world but there is another philosophy listen we are praying in the world Sam come if Sam offends me the world teaches that Sam has offended you an eye for an eye 
make sure you do something that bends him so that he will know but when you come into the kingdom it says to even pray for those who despitefully use you now you do that let me tell you what the word calls you mumu that's the name that's the name invented for those who obey god that far when you obey god that far the world created a name for you everybody will be taking you for a ride you are doing like an idiot revenge Jare. and bible says vengeance is mine and you are thinking do i do i do something for sam David had the opportunity to kill Saul and he left Saul. Ah, David, yes, your chance. David said, it doesn't work that way. There is a pattern. It is God that lifts. If I lift myself, I will keep myself in the palace. Give. That's the pattern of the kingdom. The wall says, take. Search his pocket. Remove everything and make it your own. That's how you rise. And that's the way many of us have taught. You can inflate school fees. Daddy, they've increased our school fees to 120,000. Print some letters that are a lie. And they give you, and you say, smartness. That's what the world calls it. In this kingdom, we call it death. Because God's system of justice... Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you want you here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching